Griggs had everybody primed. He said, just get to your speech. We're going against freedom now. We're going for black power. Don't hit too much on freedom now, but hit the need for power. So we built up on the need for power. And just when I got there, before I got it, Ricks was there saying, hit him now, hit him now. And I kept saying, give me time, give me time. When we finally got him, we dropped it. Black power, of course, they had been primed, and they responded immediately. But I myself, to be honest, I didn't expect that enthusiastic response. We want black power. Until finally, everyone together was thundering, black power, black power. And that was chilling, that was frightening. It scared people because they did not understand they could not subtract power, violence from power. They could only see power as a violent instrument accompanying it. It was empty rhetoric. It was not a, not a message. And the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee had a rich history of being involved in programmatic efforts and not just the, uh, the use of slogan. Uh, it was at that point, uh, during that march, um, that I made a decision to leave the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. The cause of black equality will be decided by black people. Because the media the saw the call for black power as a major shift in the and civil rights movement. There was a tendency, I thought, uh, to overplay it. There were a lot of new reporters, reporters who were new to this beat, who were coming in from a lot of papers around the country as the march began to pick up momentum and as this black power theme began to get some publicity. The second reason was that it was never, the theme was never really clearly articulated, or at least what it meant was never clearly defined. And so it, it was open to very broad interpretations. And there were some whites, for their own reasons, who wanted to uh, take this as a signal of real black hostility and enmity. Hey, hey, what do you know? Yeah. What you got to go? Don't worry about the hey, what do you know? How And the strategy coming out of black power from SNCC was that blacks should organize with blacks and whites should organize with whites. SNCC took the position that if there was going to be a march in Mississippi, it should be a march that's indigenous, meaning that Mississippians should be involved and we should not call out the liberal armies from the, the north to come in and, and assist with that march. So we moved on to work with whites on issues that we felt we should work with. In the next year, that was not civil rights, that was Vietnam. On the other hand, I want to make it clear that I... As the march neared Canton, Mississippi, reporters played up the differences between Martin Luther King and Stokely Carmichael. Let me say first that this march is nonviolent. It is a nonviolent expression of our determination to be free. This is the principle of the march, and certainly we intend uh, to keep this march nonviolent. Mr. Carmichael, are you as committed to the nonviolent approach as Dr. King is? No, I'm not. Why aren't you? Well, I just don't see it as a way of life. I never have. And I also realize that no one in this country is asking the white community in the South to be nonviolent. And that, in a sense, is giving them a free license to go ahead and shoot us at will. 